Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. Yes, I am back with another video podcast. I had to stop for a little bit. I was taking a little bit of a break due to the fact that I had a bunch of content and uh, I just had to take a small break from the video. But now I'm back. I'm back at it again. And uh, I'm going to have a series of episodes and I'm going to call them Tales of the Homeland. And basically, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've uh, gathered over the last year and a half. And uh, one of the questions that I get a lot is, what is the difference from living in Mexico and living in the United States of America? Well, as everybody knows, the people that have followed me, that have listened to my shows, you know that I was born in Mexico. I am from a part of Mexico that I am not going to name because I still have family over there. I am from a part of Mexico that is very violent. There's a lot of crime. Drugs is the normal. And uh, growing up and trying to make it out of the hood is very difficult. My father was born in Texas. He was just born there. Okay. He was raised in a really bad neighborhood. One of the most uh, harshest neighborhoods in, in that city of Mexico. His siblings, his parents, everybody is from the same neighborhood. Really tough, uh, really tough neighborhood. Growing up, every Sunday, we used to go there, and um, it was breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? It's a tradition. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Grandpa will give us money. We'll go to the store. We'll buy some candy, all kinds of things, right? We'll be there all day, all day with grandparents. And after dinner, over there in Mexico, it's a little bit different. After dinner, everybody comes out of their homes, like everybody, right? It's like they're programmed. They know exactly when everybody's having dinner in the whole block, right? They all come out. On the weekends, they stick. They they have their chairs outside. They have music. They have beers, and all of a sudden, you know, you look back and there's like 17 people because different neighbors are coming over. All the kids are playing with each other, and it's just a normal thing. Then out of the blue, you see somebody running, police running after them. Somebody broke into somebody's house, and it's a normal thing. And the the party continues. It's just like, oh my god, look, he's stealing. It's really different over there. There would be fights to the death. Uh, I witnessed a lot of them. There would be fights in the middle of the street where two different either gang members or whatever they were, they would fight to the death, try to stab each other, to try to slice each other's throat um, right in front of everyone in the middle of the street. And uh, parents, my parents would grab us, stick us in the house, and they wouldn't let us out until the show was over, right? And over there was a show. It wasn't like anybody was going to stop them because you don't want to stop them because then these guys are going to try to go after you, right? Because they know that you're from that neighborhood. So you basically have, have to let them battle it out like if they're gladiators. Well, somebody does call the cops. The cops show up because it's not like here where you call 911 and then they show up right away. Over there, they take their sweet ass time and they show up and then, they're getting, then, then they arrest them. And then what's funny is the people... The people that are watching this fight, right? There's different blocks and all these people are outside watching this fucking event. They start getting mad at the cops that these dudes that are trying to kill each other are getting arrested. That's weird. That's how jacked up it is, isn't it? I mean, think about it. You don't want them to get arrested. You'd rather watch them stab each other. So weird. It is so weird. And again, nobody gets in the middle of anything because they're afraid that these guys are going to come out of jail and stab them for trying to stop a fight that was a normal occurrence in the hood that was uh, a a one of those things where oh here we go get get inside the house and we'll my mom and dad will throw us back inside the house but we'll watch this because we'll go around to the other to the other bedroom and look out the window and you'll see these dudes like trying to kill each other stabbing each other and it'd be blood everywhere that was a normal thing afterwards they'll be like okay everything's over come outside and then we'll just be we'll be playing again with all the rest of the little kids in the neighborhood and all the rest of the adults will be talking about the fight or talking about something different, just like nothing, just like normal. That was the normal thing in that neighborhood. And we were there a lot. Everywhere we went, we had to get an escort because you definitely don't want to have children walking around by themselves because you can get kidnapped or, you know, bad stuff could happen to you. So we, whenever we wanted to buy some candy, it's not like, here in the United States where you can go to a 
candy shop or a Walgreens or a Jewel or wherever you're from, whatever state you're from, over there, the stores are part of the neighborhood. So you'll go like a block over and a house, somebody's house, their living room is the store. Then you'll get candy and chips and soda and bread and all kinds of weird stuff, right? And in every other corner, there's a little store. Over there, they call them the tienditas, right? They're little tiny stores with arcades inside the people's living room with chips. And they'll put a bunch of hot sauce in the chips and all kinds of crazy stuff, right? But we will have to be escorted to those stores. We couldn't go to the stores by ourselves because the neighborhood was extra violent. And uh, people in that neighborhood, even if they grew up there and they were in drugs, they would still try to rob you. Even though you grew up there and you known them since they were kids, they will still try to break into your house or rob you or steal your purse or steal your car. I mean, it was uh, it was chaotic, but it was something that we grew up on, grew up with, and it was normal to us. The difference was is that my parents made sure that they communicated and they shielded us. They shielded us from that. They taught us right from wrong. That's not right. Don't do that. They're bad. Don't do drugs. And they make sure they explain to us. So we wouldn't look at it as it was okay. Even though this was happening and this was wild, it was never okay. So they did a hell of a job with us to ex explain to us what just happened, right? This what you just saw, this what just happened, it's not right. It's not good. And they had a really good way on explaining things where... We didn't grow up jacked up because of that, because it, I mean, I don't know. That's pretty rough, you know, watching people get stabbed or people go try to go after somebody with a pitchfork. And I mean, it's it's rough, right? People getting ran over in the middle of the street. They're just bleeding out. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's rough in those neighborhoods and people don't understand. It's like, well, I'm from the hood. OK, it just depends what you call the hood. Right. There's the hoods like right? like in the United States that they're super violent and hardcore. And then there's other kinds of hoods. Right. Where it's a normal thing to get stabbed and just leave you there while you bleed. You know, that's those are the kinds of hood or like, oh, hey, you know, this guy's missing. Well, they found him dead in the back of somebody else's trunk in next to the hospital. Like it's just that was a normal thing where we're from, you know, where where my dad's family is from. My mom's family, my mom's parents were from a different area, a little bit more, uh, they had a little bit more money. My parents' family, my dad's family was really poor. Uh, they worked really hard, but that's the only place they could live. My mom's family, they were also, they didn't have a whole lot of money, but they lived in an area where it was a little bit, where people had a little bit more money, right? So the violence wasn't as bad but it was hard right because my my father this is where he grew up this is where he grew up with all his siblings right he's the oldest well he's not the oldest there's five of them my aunt passed away but my dad was the oldest and the and and there's three more brothers out of out of all of them my father and one of his other brothers they got their shit together and uh, they moved out of the hood and all kinds of stuff, right? And the other two, they were just fucked up. Uh, it was so bad that there was one time where uh, we already lived in Arizona at the time, right? We were way older now. And uh, I'm just fast forwarding a little bit. And uh, we, we used to go grab my grandma from Mexico because my grandfather passed away. And uh, she was lonely, right? And uh, my father missed her, right? So... We'll go grab her, bring her over to Arizona. She'll have she'll spend the whole week with us, and then we'll drive back and take her back to Mexico. And one time we went back to Mexico, and we went to go drop her off. My dad and my mom will get down, and they'll walk her into her house. And then they realized that everything in the house was missing. Toilet seats, lights, copper off the walls. Uh, I mean, you name it. Sofas, everything. TVs, everything was gone. Because my dad's brother was one of them. He was uh, involved and he was the youngest, right? He was really young. So he was involved in drugs and stealing and all kinds of stuff. And he took the opportunity that my grandma wasn't there, that he was going to sell all her shit and everybody's shit. 
So I could see my dad's face is crying, upset, you know, slapping him, yelling at him because we could see it. We were in the car. We could see all this stuff happening because, you know, it's Mexico and, you know, it's not a whole lot of insulation. You know, I mean, you can hear everything and uh, the windows are really big. So you could you could see everything inside. And uh, my dad was pissed off. Right. Because he just sold his brother just sold all their shit for drugs. Because there's no such thing as getting a job there. You just sell your shit to buy single cigarettes at one of those little stores and and buy crack or whatever the hell these guys were doing. And that's what he did. He was he ripped everything. I mean, ripped the fucking tubing off the walls to sell it because it was copper to sell it so he can buy drugs. I mean, it's really bad. That's that's the life in a bad neighborhood in Mexico. Okay. We well, I Grew up in an okay neighborhood growing up in Mexico, where before we moved to the United States, my my parents uh, had a house in this neighborhood where it wasn't as bad. It was uh, it was decent. It was a lot more calm. It wasn't uh, it wasn't all like ghetto and people were getting stabbed. It was just a normal neighborhood. The school the school was across the street, like right across the street. Like you could throw a rock and hit it. So it was a little different, right? Uh, growing up there and then going to my grandma's house, like we didn't see much of a difference because it was normal to us. This was normal. This kind of violence was normal when we were growing up. But like I said, my parents did a good job where we didn't grow up to be jacked up about it. When I started to get older, I started realizing how dangerous it was. And I was like, holy shit, we could have died over there. Like it was dangerous. You know, you sometimes when, when I when we went back for a funeral, um, just looking around in the neighborhood where I grew up as a kid and my grandparents' neighborhood and dad's neighborhood and all that, right? Um, it's sad, right? It's sad. You see a lot of people are gone. Either most of the people in those neighborhoods are, they died of overdose. They were killed. Um, they're in prison. Uh, they're in a the corner, all skinny, sleeping, peeing on themselves, all cracked out. I mean, that's that's the life there. So either you make it or you you become part of the hood, right? So yeah, it was a little different. It was a little different living living over there. And this is just like the bad story, right? Obviously, uh, in my next series, in the next episode, I'll have like the good things about it. Also, I'll have like the close encounters to being kidnapped story. And I have I have a lot of stories. I've I've lived a uh, pretty not I wouldn't say cool life, but interesting life, right? And uh, yes, I. Once you experience it, you're born in a different country, and you experience all this, you understand that it's completely different. You think police brutality in this in the United States is bad? You should try going to Mexico. There is no law, even though you think that there's a law. There is no law. If you get busted, you're going to get tortured. You're going to break your legs. They're going to waterboard you. They're going to shock you. They're going to do all those things. We know because that happened to the other brother, my my uh, my dad's other brother. He was tortured and uh, just beat to death almost um, whenever they will, or, you know, because they can just stop you and go, hey, what are you doing? And they just beat the shit out of you because they want money. And this will be this will be the cops. This is the cops. So people here complain about police brutality. Yeah, it's shitty. They shouldn't be doing any of that. No matter where you're from or what country, you shouldn't use police. Uh, you shouldn't abuse the power, right? You shouldn't, you, there shouldn't be any of this shit. But the reality, this is the way it is. So just imagine if the shit happens here, just double it in a different country where they'll kill you and they'll throw you somewhere else and you don't even know what happened. You'll just find, they'll find your dead body in a canal, Right. And there'll be no investigation. Nobody would give a shit. That's it. Here, at least they pretend to investigate. And sometimes you get caught. You know, you, they're like, oh, we caught him. Right. All that shit over there. You don't get caught. It's very unlikely. And most of the time, it's people with power that uh, you don't want to disclose any information. They might be asking you for money. They might be asking you like, hey, you, you're, you're on drugs. Who's selling you the drugs? I won't tell you. They torture you. You don't talk. They murder you. And then that's the end of you. That's how it is living in a neighborhood like that. It is rough. We were kids 
And growing up, right, we cared about playing, hanging out. But like I said, when I started getting older, I started realizing that that shit was dangerous and it was scary. However, because I was so, I was numb to it, I wasn't as scared as I am now, right? If I was to go back to that, to those neighborhoods, I would be scared shitless because I know the shit that happens there. I know the kinds of things that I, that happened there and that things that I've seen in those neighborhoods. It's rough, right? That shit's rough. It's uh, not something for a kid to see. However, um, if you are in those kinds of situations, the best thing you could do is explain to your children what's happening and explain to them what, you know, why it's bad and not celebrate it, right? There was people out there celebrating because somebody was stabbing the other guy. I mean, it's how do you live like that, right? How do you live like that? So then your kids think it's okay. Yeah, get him, stab him. I mean, that's not teaching them anything, right? You're just teaching your kids to stay in the hood and be part of it, right? You become part of the hood and you'll never leave and you'll die there. And that'll be, that's your fate, right? So, yeah, that was uh, that was the rough part of living over there. Uh, other than that, you know, where I'm from is also really beautiful. The people um, are amazing. They're nice. There's a lot of culture there. Uh, there's a lot of good people. Um, it just depends what neighborhood you're from, right? And, of course, it's just like here. If you go to another neighborhood that you're not supposed to be in and have beef, you know, they'll, you won't, they won't find you. So, I mean, it's... It's harsh, right? You always have to be in your best behavior. You always have to make sure that you don't go around talking all kinds of shit. Because if you do, you might talk shit to the wrong person. And a lot of people here just talk a lot. Oh, yeah, this and that. Over there, they know they can get away with shit. And they'll, they'll be the end of you. It's, it's, uh, it's rough. It's a little rough. I don't wish that on anybody. I don't wish, you know, I wish all these things could... All these neighborhoods could get fixed and all that, but, uh, you know, they don't. They just continue. They continue to, uh, it just keeps going, right? It's a big, it's a big, vicious circle. And uh, they just continue, new people show up and they continue to replace the ones that die or get arrested or overdose. And it just keeps going, right? So big, big circle. And it's a sad thing, right? It's a sad thing because that's where I'm from. And that's where I was born and raised, basically, right? So it's like, it's just. Um, it's a sad thing now that I am, uh, you know, 40 years old and I look back and I'm like, man, you know, such a beautiful city and so much violence. And, uh, you know, it's at one point it was uh, more violent than going to Iraq during the war. So you can make some uh, you can try to go find some uh, information on that and you'll figure out what city I was born. But uh, it was uh, very dangerous and it still is very dangerous. Uh, we have a lot of family there and whenever they come visit, they tell us about all the shit that happens there. And I mean, if you're driving the wrong car and they think you're one of them, they'll shoot you up until you're dead. And then, oh, whoops, wrong person. Uh, it's like that, right? They don't uh, they don't ask for anything. And sometimes it's the cops too, right? You don't even know who's going to get you. So it's it's tough. It's, it's a tough living over there. Um, you live day by day. And I'll, and I'll talk about that on my next series, on my next episode of Tales from the Homeland. But I'll talk about how you live in Mexico, right? How, you know, it's not the same as here. So it's different also just buying groceries. So, yeah, you know, and uh, so just to finish this episode off, um, if you're ever in a situation where there's violence like that and uh, you want to make sure your kids don't grow up to be like that, try to explain to your kids that, hey, this is not right. This is not normal. This is not something that it's, that you should be doing or, or thinking about doing. That's what my parents did. That's the, you know, that's what my parents did. And we lived in a, we grew up and we were there a lot in the neighborhood in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in that city. So if you talk to them and they, and, and we looked up to our parents because my parents were out there cheering and saying, yeah, stab him. They were like upset, right? That this was happening. And, uh, you know, don't celebrate bad behavior, right? Because then you have your kids, they'll see that and they think it's okay to have bad behavior too and do the wrong shit. So, I mean, that's the only words of advice I can say before I end the show. Um, that's the stuff that my parents did and and we didn't grow up to be like that. You know what I mean? We we never 
wish to ever do something like that to to another human being, right? Uh, to hurt them in that kind of way or 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 uh, to live that kind of way. So hopefully you like this episode. Again, this is uh, this is going to be a series of episodes, Tales of the Homeland. Until next time, peace.